It's 2022. Mobile games are dominating a major portion of the gaming space. We see new ones introduced every day from massive companies, and the quality and expectations from the consumer are growing higher and higher. But it wasn't always like this. There was a time where every mobile game was... this. <laughs> but that didn't stop one Korean company from making one of the biggest and longest lasting mobile games to ever exist. Summoner's War was introduced in 2014, and it took a very long time before it would become the game that we know and enjoy today. I'd like to take a dive into its past and look at how this game became the way that it is now. When the game originally launched in 2014, it came out with 9 scenario modes, 2 Kairos dungeons, the Elemental Kairos dungeons, and the Sky Arena. That's about it! When July 1st came around, the first update we'd ever see in the game finally arrived and it introduced guilds and new monster families, the Pixie, Phantom Thief, Mystic Witch, Bounty Hunter, and Occult Girls. And it also introduced the ability to lock monsters and review them. Around two weeks later, we'd see the first of a balance patch in the game. Next month in August, we'd see even more new monsters introduced, the Dragon Knight, Lich, Living Armor, and Skull Soldiers. Fusions were introduced to the game, and we were given the first ever monster storage. Just over a week later from that patch, we saw another balance patch. Balance patches were a lot more common during the early days of the game, and if I were to list every single one, we would be here for hours. But I will mention a few. In September, we got TOA, Legendary Scrolls were finally introduced, and some small stuff here and there, like name changes and vice leaders for guilds. We also got TOA rankings and new monsters as usual. Monkey Kings, Kung Fu Girls, Samurai, Drunken Masters, and Beast Monks. When October rolled around, we finally got the rest of the scenarios, Aiden Forest, Fairy Castle, Mount Runar, and Chiruka Remains. It extended the story up until that point, and then it would be deserted for the next four years. And we also got new runes introduced to the game. Will, Shield, Revenge, Nemesis. And then towards the end of the year, we got some new monsters, the Imp Champions, Brownie Magicians, Kobold Bombers, Hell Lady. We got the ability to change language settings. And then in another patch two weeks later, we also got the Beast Hunters, Sky Dancers, Taoists, and Pioneers. The first year was very exciting. A lot of new monster families were being introduced. The game was still fresh. People were still trying to understand the mechanics and people were still having a great time. But there was a bit of lack of content in high-end PVP, mostly being dominated by with the first update of the new year in 2015, we got introduced to the Asia server, and a lot of people from the original global servers were offered to be able to move over to the new server. And someone we might know as well might have left. In February following, we'd get summoning stones and a new monster, the Fairy Queen. The Fairy Queen was different from the existing fairy family and was offered as an event monster at the time. Next month, we'd also get more monsters, the Penguin Knight, Battle Mammoth, Barbarian King, Polar Queen, Ifrit, and Cowgirls. And guild battles were finally introduced to the game. It literally took almost a year for guild battles to be introduced. When April finally rolled around, we got the first major rune balancing. Violent rates were increased from 20% to 22%, but each subsequent proc was reduced by 30%. So it would be like 22 to 15 to around 11 and so on and so forth. Fatal runes also went from 30 to 35% attack and shield runes went from 10% to 15%. Next month in May, we got a new rotation added to TOA, Lilith, the female rotation, and bombs didn't use to stun. They only added it this month and made it so that they could stun for one turn after going off. By June, we would see new monsters introduced once more, the Charger Sharks, Pirate Captains, Mermaids, and Sea Emperors. We would finally see Guild Leader skills introduced to the game. Dimensional Rift was added and Summoning Stone rotations went from twice a month to four times a month. So once a week. Next month, Violarines got adjusted again. The additional proc weight went from 30% to 45%, which meant that it would be like 22, to 12, to seven, to four, etc. In that month as well, we also saw the introduction of the Europe server. We got the Magic Knight family introduced to the game. Of course, we got some more new monsters, the Neostone Fighter, Neostone Agent, Martial Artist, and Assassins. And they made it so that Mystical Scrolls and everything related to that can only summon Nat 3s and above. You used to be able to summon Awaken Two Stars. Imagine you do an LD and you get this motherfucker. September rolled around and Necropolis was finally introduced to the game, but this isn't the Necropolis that we know today. In that month as well, we also got Destroy Runes and we got some new families, 
the mummy, Anubis, Horus, and Desert Queen. And then at the end of the month, we finally got the major rune shift. The runes were finally separated into each dungeon respectively. Before, giants would drop Energy, Fatal, Blade, Rage, Swift, Focus, and Despair. Dragons would drop Guard, Endure, Violent, Will, Nemesis, Shield, Revenge, and Vampire. And Necro dropped Vampire, Nemesis, Shield, Destroy, Rage. Comptor shifted things around to what it was today and helped give each dungeon a unique identity. For Spooky Month, we got the new monsters Frankensteins and Jack O' Lanterns. And then the month after that, we got Elven Rangers and consecutive power-ups but only 10 power-ups. And in the month of December, patch 2.0 was finally released. We got the introduction of World Boss and Rift of Worlds, the raid system. And so grinds and gems were introduced to the game. And then we also got transmogs, which were being flooded with now endlessly. Comtos was maturing the game. It was giving us a lot of things to do as a community and building up some high-end PVP. But one specific mode hasn't been introduced yet. You might be thinking, where is RTA? This year started off fairly slow. In February, we saw the introduction of the Hogs and Fairy Kings. Later in April, we got raid support and we got Panda Warriors. However, finally, in the month of June, we saw the introduction of the first tests of RTA. We would see several more tests rolling throughout the next few months. But in the month of August, we got the addition of the private chat feature. I cannot believe it took two years for them to implement the ability to DM people, but small indie company, I guess. And in September, we got the 3.0 update. Rift Dungeons were finally introduced. The crafting building and system was finally added to the game. And we got some new rune sets, fight, determination, accuracy, enhance, and tolerance. We were able to craft the homunculus because of the new Rift Dungeons and the level cap was increased from 40 to 50. And we got some more Sky Islands. It was fairly quiet as we were testing RTA, but at the end of November, we got two new monsters, the Dice Magician and Heart Magicians. And then at the end of the year for December, we got the mental system finally added and four star and above monsters can no longer be unsummoned why that was ever a feature I don't know so as you can see by year three the game was finally starting to take shape to what it would eventually become but the year that would follow would mark a great point in summoners world history First update of the year, in January, we finally got some rune drop improvements. We could no longer get four star runes from B10 in Kairos dungeons. And subsequently the drop rates for other runes were moved up as well. At the end of the month in January, we'd also got additional placements for raids. So you can now only raid with another person. In February, we got the new monster, the unicorns. And in March, we'd finally see the first official season of World Arena beginning. These seasons will last around two to three months every year. We got the new World Arena store. RTA replays were also introduced, and the last change that Comptors did would reshape the game entirely. But we got some nice sprucing up of graphics. The intro video was added. We got some changed backgrounds for the early scenarios. We got model updates for some of the one to three star monsters and some of the thumbnails for the one and two star monsters were changed as well. In June, the new broom was finally born when goodwill contests were introduced and we also got the LD homunculus. In July, the second season of RTA started. I won't mention every single RTA start. However, this one is worth mentioning because this is the season that introduced the violent rule where you can only proc once a turn and later in that month we also got the rune manager which allowed you to search your runes and temporarily grave things to your units to compare and then in september the paladin was given to us and rta special league was introduced and these would follow after every regular season of rta ended towards the end of the year in november siege battles were finally introduced oh he just failed <laughs> And the SWC scroll was added, which led up to the first annual Summoners War Championship that Tontos would host every single year. And at the end of the year, Christmas times had finally rolled around and we were given the Transcendent Scroll, an elusive scroll that guaranteed a nat five if you summoned one. You can really see that this year, Comptor started taking the community more seriously, hosting SWC at the end of the year and also Mobile Masters before that. They really liked the fact that people were together, working together, acting together, cooperating, almost as if we were 
siblings. Maybe twins? The first major update we saw in March were the introduction of the Boomerang Warrior and Chakram Dancer. And no more than two weeks later, the twins were nerfed. When they originally came out, one twin could link up with multiple other twins. For example, one Boomerang could take three Chakram Dancers with it. And so this nerf made it so that only one Chakram can be paired with one Boomerang and vice versa. And also at the end of April, in an attempt to combat siege farming, where smaller guilds could be made with a bunch of AFK accounts and a few individuals could rack up a lot of crystals by farming participation. Comptos decided to limit the amount of crystals and guild points that one member could receive per siege. In May, we finally saw the introduction of the ancient magic shop, which was the event currency. And then in July, we got patch 4.0. Tartarus Labyrinth was introduced, guild level and achievements were added, the guild check-in system was added, the guild magic shop was added, and in memorial gems and grinds were added. At the end of August, we got the new monsters, the Dryad and Druid. And two months later from that, we also got Lightning Emperors and Giant Warriors and dungeon rankings were finally added. And finally, at the end of the year, Splendid Blessings were added to the game. This year felt like a bit of a fumble in my opinion from Contours. After the significant high of 2017, this year, not so good. It started off with a pretty sour note and didn't have a major update as compared to RTA was last year. But the game was still in a healthy state and the community was still growing. But hey, when is that whole thing ever going to open up? The first update of 2019 in January, we saw the introduction of snipers and cannon girls, and finally we could test our own PvP defenses on ourselves. In May, we finally got ancient crystals, something that we could use our duplicate Nat 5s for. Me being a dumbass, having fed multiple Nat 5s as skill ups in the past, regrets this heavily. And then we also got a separate storage for Angel Mons, Devil Mon, Rainbow Mon, etc. In June, finally, patch 5.0 opened up the dimensional hole. We got secondary awakenings for the Inugamis, Warbear, Fairy, and Pixies. Ancient runes, grinds, and gems were introduced. And this was a bit less worrying than people thought it would be. They haven't sold any ancient runes in packs even three years later. They've been pretty good on the word. In August, we got two new monsters, the demons and gargoyles. We got the ability to target mid bosses during Kairos dungeons. At the end of November, we saw a new dimension added, which brought along two new second awakenings for the werewolves and martial cats. And at the end of the year, we got a new monster, the Beast Rider. I think at this point in time, the game had really started maturing. Basically every system in the game had been added. Some were further along in development than others. The second awakenings were a breath of fresh air for a lot of older units, and it was very welcomed. But in my opinion, none of these changes compared to the changes we were about to see in at the start of the year, in January and February, we were hit with two of the biggest updates to PvP. First came the new Violent Rule introduced with the beginning of Season 12 of RTA, which lowered your Violent rates by 5% and increased the opponents by 5 whenever you got a proc and vice versa. But more importantly, we got RTA exclusive runes, which meant that we were able to use the same runes exclusively in RTA. For everyone, this was huge because it meant that you could separate your farming runes that were really good with your RTA rune. A lot of new options were opened up and the overall rune quality in RTA was massively improved. In March, we got a new 2A, the Griffin, and we also got some quality of life with the ability to auto store materials from the inbox. But the month after that, Siege C Seasons finally became a thing, and a tournament that would follow the end of the regular season. Right. Siege tournament to summer. And at the end of that month in May, we also got two new monsters, the Art Master and String Master. In June, we got the ability to select and sell multiple runes, grinds, and gems at the same time. And then next month in July, we got patch 6.0. Dimensional Predator was added, two new Kairos dungeons. Steel Fortress and Punisher's Crypt artifacts and all the related systems to those were added. And they also made existing Kairos dungeons harder by adding a B12 that only dropped six star runes. This was a huge patch. It redefined a lot of the core systems that we knew and how we ruined our units, but this was somehow even overshadowed by what came in August. That's right, in August, we got the first Summons War collaboration with Street Fighter V. This also introduced the SP Summon system, which would increase odds of getting new units. And then after that, in September, we get the Repeat Battle system introduced to Summons War. And also we got the Artifact Manager as well, and they also increased the maximum storage for energy. In October, this was mostly 
updating some existing systems. They added the ability to auto replay for dimensional hull and also the ability to power up runes and artifacts right away during the auto battle menu and also a power saving icon in the bottom left for the repeat battle menu. And at the end of that month, we got TOA Hell added and unfortunately the Street Fighter collab time period had ended. So we got the Summoner's War replacement versions introduced to the game. In November, we got the Island Grown build. I mean, the Monster Sealed Shrine was added, which allowed a quick way to store summoned monsters. And at the end of the month, we also got the ability to repeat battle for raids. And finally, towards the end of the year, we got a new dimension, Calderon, with two new second awakenings for the Howl and Grim Reaper. This year was massive, I think. This year was basically 2014 all over again. There were huge updates, exciting updates. We got our first collab. We got major quality of life systems. We got huge shakeups to the core of the game. And this is all done during a time when COVID was still happening. This year was unbelievable. And I think honestly, if 2020 hadn't have happened, I wouldn't be still playing the game. And come to us, carry this momentum into 20- so even though the repeat battle system that Contos introduced to Summoner's War was pretty good compared to a lot of other mobile games, they managed to iterate on top of it by giving us the ability to do PvP while repeat battling. And they also buffed the values of some artifact subs and straight removed some. In February, we get two new monsters, the Omuji and Oni Musha. And unfortunately, the Oni Mushas were not released in a very good state. I think we all know that Kaki, the fire Oni Musha, is ridiculous, right? So let's go over the... Um the notice that they talked about. Yep, less than two weeks later, unfortunately, after the siege tournament had already finished, Kaki was nerfed. And Contos for the first time gave people the ability to refund the resources they used to power up Kaki's. In April, we got a rework of the glory building systems. And towards the end of the month, we also got mock battle systems added. Basically a way for you to test out new monsters that Contos releases or to Google some answers and get some rewards. And a new 2A was added for the high elementals. I thought I should point out that in my notes when writing this script, the only thing that says underneath the high elemental is this. I think you'll agree with me. In May, we got a new monster, the mages, and a repurchase option was finally introduced. In June, they made some adjustments to the B11 rune drop rates. And towards the end of the month, the all attribute scroll was finally added. Don't let Comptors fool you. This is just a legendary scroll. In July, we got 10x rune crafting and single player raids were added so you could replay battle raids by yourself. And also the daily check-in rewards were improved. In August, we got two new monsters, the Sky Surfer and Robo. In September, 2v2 RTA was introduced. New daily missions were reworked. Towards the end of October, we got a new monster, the Totemist, and the bundle cell selected feature was added, allowing you to add a filter to that button. Towards the end of November, Interserver Arena was added. And in December, we got two new monsters, the Weapon Master and Rune Blacksmith. This year honestly started off with a bit of a fumble, especially when you compare it to the heights of the year before. Also in the year 2021, we didn't get a huge number change update. Every year before this, we had gotten a major content introduced to the game. This year was severely lacking and we also saw no collab. But of course, Comptos heard we wanted another collaboration. And so they delivered in 20... But first in January, they added the rune statistics tab, which you could see popular builds of a specific monster by the community. The order engrave feature was added and the ability to auto select monsters to drag into storage was also brought to the game. And in March, we got a new dimension added, finally. We also got two new second awakenings for the Vagabond and Mystic Witch. And then towards the end of the month, we got the rune power-up queue where you could do 10 rune power-ups sequentially. In April, we got two new monsters, the Shadowcasters and Hypno Meows. In May, we got the ability to order replay 10 floors of TOA at a time. And the 10X summon was added, kind of. And then obviously we also got the artifact power-up queue as well. In June, we got a new monster added, the Battle Angel and we got the ability to auto fill in the power up circle and also other respected crafting areas. And finally, in August, we got the 7.0 update. Monster subjugation was added, home to us deleted regular guild battles and replaced it with rival guild battles and introduced world guild battles instead. Basically like RTA and Interserver, but for guild battles. At the end of August, I love cookies. In September, they changed the layouts of the shops to make it more easily viewable. And finally, in October, they changed the siege map around to make some towers more accessible. And they made the time period for you to do siege 
12 hours down from two 12 hour period. But yeah, sorry if this video was a bit off the goop. It was very long. Who would have thought a game that has been out for eight years would have a lot of updates. So please, for my sanity, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh God. I don't have a script for this part of the video. Yeah, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, hit subscribe, leave a comment, ring the bell notification, stuff like that, you know. We'll have more content coming soon. So stay tuned. That's it for me. This recording session was probably like an hour. Fuck, I need a drink water. Subscribe. <laughs>